Hey, Ryan. Hey, Chris. It's been a while. <laughs> it's 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 been a long time. Lots of tweets asking about where we where we've been, and now here we are. We made it two episodes in. Yeah. So I I think that was my prediction. Yeah, yeah. Two one is one is one, and two is a series. <laughs> yeah, there we're was... back for the second season. <laughs> there was just a bit of a delay in between. And uh, so, uh, but it's it's been fun, you know, I feel like every time we've been to workshops or, or conferences that we have somebody come up and say, hey, when are you gonna do some more demand thinking? That thing was awesome. And we, we, were, we were joking about it, you know, we're looking back at the recordings and we were calling it Wayne's World because it was so kind of like improv and amateur, you know, but uh, when you have new stuff to talk about and you don't know how to talk about it, you just turn the camera on and you, and you start, right? Yeah, it's just, it's just, call each other and hit the record button. And anytime we don't hit the record button, I'm always like, we talk for an hour and a half. I'm like, why didn't we just record? That just would have been an episode. Totally. So I'm glad that we decided to do this. So we we got through two episodes and we were tr trying to talk, and I think partially successful, talking about how to, how to think in a deeper way about what's the right work and how to you know, take something like a raw idea or a feature request and, and try and dig, dig into, into what the demand actually is, like what, what's actually meaningful about the idea and how do we turn that into, into deciding what to build. And we have a lot more language for that now. Um, we, I, I felt pretty stuck actually after that second episode because the feedback we were getting from people is like, hey, this, this is all cool and everything, but how do I use it? Like, how do I... I, I don't have time. You're telling me that I need to like dig deeper and, and unpack things, but like, I don't have, any, I don't have more hours in my day to do this. And, and even if I do unpack it, like where, where, do, where does this work go? And, and, and how does it turn into a project? It felt like there was a lot of sort of like, like it, like it all sounds good, but how do I actually put it into practice? Yeah. I, and I actually felt that way personally too. Right. It, it, so there's no doubt that a, a, a useful tool was created but all of the questions were, when do I pick this thing up? When do, should I be doing this every day? Is this a once of, and, and I, so like I compare it to jobs, right? I know when I have a strategic decision to make, I'm going to go deep and I'm going to interview some people and, and, and figure out what the struggle is and go, go execute on it. With demand thinking, we had the tool, right? We're going to walk back the timeline in a, in, a, in a, for a feature request and sort of figure that out or for a bug, but it was the same. It's like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to do every bug request. I'm not sure how to filter, you know, for the important ones. So it's like the, the trigger, there were sort of still gaps, right? And the triggers weren't completely clear as to when to reach for it. Totally. And then uh, it worked out that Jason pulled me aside and, and suggested that I write this book for Basecamp, Shape Up. And it just turns out that this, the content of Shape Up basically articulates exactly what I felt was blocking us. Um, mm -hmm. How do we talk about now? We now we we have the word shaping the work, right? And 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 how do we turn shaped work into a project? And and what does it mean to shape the work? And now I feel like we kind of have this uh, this framework around it, where now we can think of what we were talking about before as, like you said, like walking back the timeline and trying to to do the demand thinking to unpack what the feature request is really about. Now we can understand that as like an input to shaping. Yeah, and, and the, the timing was fascinating too, right? So I just as an update, I'm at a company called Autobooks uh, right now, sort of running parts of product and a growth team and, you know, it's, it's a startup. So the, the roles are always hard to, hard to define. Um, but it was great timing in terms of you um, figuring out what the content of that book was going to be and, and basically going through the process of saying, how do I express the things that we do at Basecamp, which is somewhat of a, of a unique company. And, and then me saying, hey, I've got um, this sandbox of like a, a extremely um, fluid startup that's willing to try new things and um, clearly has some um, engineering challenges that we want to overcome, right? So it was almost like as you're writing the content, I'm pulling pieces of it and applying it and we've got a nice feedback loop. So that um, it, it, it was a very fun process. I don't know how long has this been going on? Six, eight months, probably since this whole thing started, at least. Yeah, at least, and it, it was good because we kind of actually prototyped a lot of the shape up material together. You came to Chicago. We did some breadboarding for some auto books features, and then when it was time for me to write the book, 
I ended, I went back, to, I went out to Detroit and uh, we, we covered at least one or two of your whiteboard walls at auto books with, uh, with, you know, system sketches of how all the, how all the steps of, of the process fit together. So it was pretty fun to work on that together. So now we're kind of surfacing again with, with that work behind us. And we have a, a lot more stuff in our toolbox to, 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 to create the context around what we were trying to talk about with demand thinking. And I think that maybe brings us to something that you and I were talking about last week. We're trying to figure out where to pick this up again. And been hearing, uh, I heard the same story from you and from another team, actually a team from a, from a, from a, from a pretty big company um, who's adopting Shape Up. And we we're trying to figure out what, how, to, how to put language around this, this, this terrible meeting that happens that is painful for everybody that we're, we're calling the slapdash meeting. Uh, and, uh, and this is like where so, some, some steps of the shaping didn't happen. And then, mm -hmm. and, 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 and what is so painful about this meeting and, and what's going on there and then how, how it's changed for you and, and some of the stories we're hearing about what it looks like, uh, if we do, if we do some of these shaping and de-risking steps before we get to that meeting. So can you tell me a little bit about like, what's, what, what was this slapdash meeting thing about? Yeah, it's so it's funny. So the the last time we talked, you I remember you actually like opened your phone and you said there's this text message from somebody that I've been talking to. Like I got to I got to find it. And when you read the text and they described the meeting, the contrast that came out was incredible, right? Because at AutoBooks, we've been doing we've been doing the shape up work, we've been doing the vetting table. The, the teams are working in 6-week cycles. Like there's there's val value being created. The the team is really really happy with it. Like we're on the we're on the good side of this thing. And when you read that text, it took me way back in time. And I was thinking, oh my God, I, you almost don't recognize the contrast till somebody puts it in front of you. Uh -huh. And I said, I know, like, let me tell you about that meeting. I'll tell you exactly what happens, right? So the, the, one, of, one of the examples from way back that I can remember is like, we had, a, we had an application that, that we had built um, in the app. I'll try to be as concrete as possible. So like in the application, there's a list of, of users that gets generated, right? Um, and you can click as a user in and see all the users in the application. And at some point we had, we had uh, done a contract with a customer and they, they basically said like, we're going to use the heck out of this. And like, it's, it's a little bit slow. Is there anything you can do to speed it up? Cause like, it's kind of contingent on one of our use cases. And we'd never heard anything from any other, any other customers um, about that, that feature. Um, so we basically huddled into a room. We had a product manager. I got pulled in, right? Cause I'm supposed to be the customer person and they're all looking at me. And I said, look, this is like a buried feature. I, I can't, I can't tell you how it relates to a job. I can't, I can't tell you anything super useful. Somebody's saying, make it faster. So I'm like, I can ride along for these meetings, but I don't really know what, what to tell you in terms of, of trade-offs. And the, the way that the form worked at the time was that we were doing a server side call. We were building sort of all of the data, returning all the data. And then we had search and filter that was all happening on the, on the client side. Right. So you can see like you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of users. It's going to take a little bit of time to return that, that data set. And that's what this customer was really, really concerned about. So we met for a half an hour and everybody kind of threw up their shoulders. I had no input. The product manager who had built that list gave like a very reasonable product answer, right? Like we needed a list. I, I can't tell you the whys and all the trade-offs. Like we just sort of built this thing. So it's hard to make decisions and, and trade-offs about what to do next. So we basically left the meeting and one of the engineers said, I'll go like figure out some solutions, right? So they went off, we came back two weeks later and we were staring at a, a document that the engineer had built um, we had another 30 minutes on our calendar. So this is like a couple product managers or CTO analysts, people like that sitting, sitting in the, in the meeting. How many people are in the room? Um, one, two, three, four, five, I think seven or eight. Wow. Okay. So, so more than five. Yeah. Uh huh. Conference table TV, right? Like you can imagine, like, I'm going to walk you through the thing. Right. So, um, it's one of those situations where they, they had a solution. So they actually came back with a solution saying, um, we're going we're gonna to do a server-side filter on company, right? So like you're going to build the list and there's a company attribute with every user because it's a kind of a multi-tenant SaaS thing. So like you pick your company 
and then I'm going to return that data set, and then all of the other filters that we had, search and, and uh, creation date and all that sort, is going to act on that data set that's now in the browser, right? And um, it took, like, so 25 minutes into the meeting, we're looking at the mock-up, and, like, I think everybody is kind of trying to understand, okay, if I pick a company, it's going to return this, and then I'm going to do some other things, but do I think that the client-side filtering is acting on the entire data set, or is it very clear that the company filter is sort of one level up from these other search fields and, and constraints and things like that. And the UX people were kind of confused and we were all kind of confused and the engineer was doing his best to say like, I think this is clear, like we can, we can actually pull this off. Um, 25 minutes in, we're all kind of scratching our heads. And the, the, the thing that you, that you feel is like you spiral back to like different, like, isn't there a totally different way to solve this? What if we were to do it all on the server mm. side? Like the conversation goes out, right? And because people, A, are having a hard time understanding exactly what's being presented and all of the little intera interactions and how they would work. And and two, like when you get that feeling, you're like, let's just punt this whole thing. Like what if we put Elasticsearch in? And it's like, I got three minutes left. Do we want to, can we talk about <laughs> Elasticsearch now? Or do, do we, and... and and then what, what happened, and I think a lot of times what, what happens is like you, you get the decision maker, right? So the CTO steps in and just says, we got two minutes left. This has got to ship in three weeks. I'm making this decision and, and let's go. And then like you feel two things. Like one, we did a good job, right? Like we plow through problems and we tackle difficult things. And then you leave that meeting and it's you realize – we didn't, we didn't solve anything permanently. This is going to come back and bite us because we really didn't talk all that much about the user. We talked about the shortcomings of what we thought our solution was, but we really don't want, know, know what's going on. We're patching something to satisfy one customer, which is probably going to upset other customers. And we got to this point where we're just like, had to rush something over the finish line and, and make a decision. Um, I want to tag and, one thing you said. You said that the, the conversation goes out. So, mm. and, and, and you're kind of gesturing with your hands, like, like the conversation goes out, meaning like, like what, what, what's, what's out. Um, so here's the thing. I, I think you can only talk about that in terms like once you've seen a very like well bounded project on the table, right? You, you, because before I used shape up, I didn't understand what it meant. It was like brainstorming, right? Like, what if we put Elasticsearch on there? What if we added pagination? What if we, but the, the, the problem is, is the intent of the meeting is to be narrowing in on a solution to mm. a problem. And what you're doing is like introducing solutions that are all over the map, right? You, like, we don't really know, we, we know that we need this to load fast. But aside from that, we don't know anything about any of the other trade-offs that we need to make. Is the company as a primary filter, like, is that actually logical? Do we need creation date as a secondary filter? I Do we see. need to order this by first? And so, so, so you've got like, like a, lobbing. you've got a group of people under a really tight time box, like 30 minutes who are supposed to be making a decision about something. And it's kind of like now or never, like we're supposed to make a call and get and move forward on, on this project. And not only are there unknowns, but, but, you're, the extra, the number of unknowns is actually increasing during this time because people are saying, but what about this? And what about that? And what, what, maybe this and maybe that. And so instead of, instead of shrinking the universe of, of problems to solve, it's almost like you're, you're expanding the universe of things that you might do, but then it's becoming a bigger and bigger conversation, but the clock is ticking down. You have less and less time. That's it. And, and you're the, the, the one of the problems is like, you're, it's okay to have those kinds of conversations. I don't think you get very far posing different solutions without really understanding it's understanding the, the problem. But under the under the gun of thirty minutes, we need to have a decision. We need to you know push through this. It 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 just can't can't happen. So a friend of mine was talking about a similar meeting he had. He he says two weeks ago we're in a grooming session and uh, so they're trying to figure out you know what goes into a go what goes into a sprint and. There were some some stories that that he had defined just with words, you know, like it's got to do this and that and this. And the de a designer took that and turned it into designs. <clears throat> the designer hands the designs back, and now they walk into a room with engineers, and they're going to have a meeting about, you know, how do we make this happen, right? Yeah. And it's the yeah. same thing. It's a short meeting. There's not a lot of time to actually <clears throat> s 
do the problem solving. There's too many people in the room. And now what's happening is there's a lot of debate about the, about the work. Like, are we going to do it like this or like that? Is it like this? Well, maybe that's not the right thing. Maybe it should be this instead. And it's like the, the quote, the quote I have from him was it was painful. Yeah. What's, what what's tell me about that like what's <laughs> it's just a meeting you're just talking about some work like what's painful um you, you i th i think very quickly like if you're in a 30 minute meeting <clears throat> it feels like 15 10 to 15 minutes in you know that you're never going to be able to do something well oh and man. i i think that's that's the worst pain right it's like we're we're gonna we need to get, we're, this is being imposed on us. We have very little information. We're, we're not sure where to go. The t the, it's like a ticking time bomb. And it's like the, the worst of, of evils and, or the, the least of evils. And nobody, I don't know anybody who likes to, um, like anybody in the creative product space who likes to work under those, under those conditions, right? Nothing that's going to delight a user is going to come out of that sort of, uh, that sort of meeting. It's just, ex it's exhausting and, and painful. So what's, so, so that's sort of the before picture. What's, yeah. wh wh what are you doing now? And, uh, and, and how's that different? Yeah. So, so, um, so one thing that I'll say, I guess, talking about the, the before picture is that like, I want, I don't want to race to a solution. Right. But one of the things that I did is I, I came out of that meeting, you know, back in the day and I, I talked to the engineer, I just grabbed a coffee. Like you would come up with this mock-up you know, he clearly wasn't happy about it because it's not like anybody bought into it in the, in the meeting. So I said like, how did you get to that point? Right. How did you get to a point where you were pitching that mock-up in this meeting with eight people and a half an hour to discuss it? To discuss uh, it right. Uh -huh, and, uh -huh. and he was telling me the story like I, I, and you know, I don't, I don't want to, he's not shirking responsibility. He's not, but he's like, I, I don't know any of the constraints. I don't know the customer. I just like, I had 30 minutes. I put a customer filter or a customer filter on the top that was server side. And I thought it would have solved the, solved the problem. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and, and so the, the, the issue that I see is that like, if we take all of our ideas, right. And we plant them as seeds and say, let's do 30 minute meetings and let an engineer work on them for 30 minutes and see what they come up with you end up with people sort of frantically running from one box to the next, checking off, checking off boxes, right? And, and like one of the worst things that can happen is one of them slips through the cracks and gets built on the other end because there hasn't been much, much thought put, put into it. The, the, the thing that I want to highlight is that we never needed to have either one of those meetings and we never needed to ask that engineer to spend 30 minutes on this, this, this problem. If we would have actually taken the time to go up upstream, look at the contract, talk to the customer, sort of figure out the totality of the whole thing, and keep in mind the capacity that we have to actually like work on things and ship quality features and improvements to our product, we probably could have checked this box, you know, in silence to the rest of the team and just said, let's not worry about this. We're going to deprioritize this and prioritize the things that the things that matter. So there's there's a there's kind of a shallow work being done up front with not a lot of time. And then, and then when it starts to get real and there's a group of people actually really thinking about, well, what's the next step? What do we put in the sprint or whatever? Yeah. There starts to be some deeper thinking, but now there's, there's, there's not enough preparation. There's not enough information in the room. People don't actually have the answers to the questions that are being raised and a decision has to be made now. And like, we're all here. So what are we going to do? And then a call gets made. And then there's this feeling like you're, you're committing to something you don't understand that you can feel is like Swiss cheese. And, yeah. and, but, but now you got to go. And, and, and that's kind of this like, ugh, like painful feeling. It's a whole, yeah. N nothing good is ever, ever going to come out of that. Right. It, so, you, it's, it's, best case you get lucky. Worst case, it's a total disaster, I guess. So the, the contrast to this is going to be then what? Uh, more, there's got to be different kind of work that happens before you get into the room, right? Yeah. Well, the, the, the contract, the reason I haven't felt this or experienced this in a long time is because of doing the shape up work, right? So, um, at AutoBooks, we've done a number of projects now. Um, all of this is cemented in, in jobs, which you can do a lot of shape up without jobs. We, we're not going to go far down that, that rabbit hole. Um, but we, we have a lot of conviction when it comes to our product decisions and the things we want to build. So the, the first, the first thing that we build was called the payment form. Um, 
very briefly, AutoBooks provides a, a basically a simple invoicing and, and payment system to small businesses, and we deliver it through through banks. So you, you log into your online banking, your bank account, you see your account balance, you see bill pay. Now you see AutoBooks, and you can click there, create an invoice, get paid, things like things like that. Um, and one, one of the things that we learned through through the jobs interviews was that people were hacking our system in order to receive credit card payments. So they weren't an invoicing sort of business, but they realized that if they sent an invoice via email, a person could click that email and arrive at a, a page where they put in their credit card information to pay the invoice. We did a bunch of jobs interviews. Why did you adopt AutoBooks? Why well, did you switch? And a lot of people say like, I do this wonky thing with your invoicing system. Like I've got my extremely high end complicated invoicing system that connects to inventory management and all these other systems. I can't get rid of that but I wanted to be able to accept payments right into my bank account. So I do this thing where I send out my real invoice. Then I sort of send out a fake invoice and tell them to click that button to pay online. It's like this one. And we heard it over and over and over again. Right? So the, the, the thing that we, we did differently was basically take all of that and go through the breadboarding process and say, we know that this struggle exists. It's not a great user experience to have to create an invoice just to accept a credit card payment for, for a customer. So what is the most lightweight thing that we could ship inside of, of six weeks to be able to, to address this, this concern? And you so run who's in the room? How many people, how many people oh. are in the room when you're doing this? This isn't, this isn't uh, eight people anymore. You don't have the CTO in the room this time, right? It's a different group. Yeah, this, this is a different group. So this is, this is two people, right? So this is me and a, and a kind of call them like a front end engineer, basically. Um, who are all steeped in the insight, right? So we had been through every one of the interviews. We knew them top to bottom. So we understood the customer and we had the shorthand language. Like we, we were at the same level of knowledge in terms of our knowledge of audiobooks, our knowledge of the customer, our knowledge of the, of the product. And, and this is, I think, what you explain in the book of like a room with whiteboards in it and moving incredibly fast, like drawing out a breadboard, crossing a couple things off at the same time he's on, this is Jordan who's, who runs growth at AutoBooks. He's on another whiteboard sort of drawing it out. And it's, but the difference is it's not going out. It's like, it's, it's cornering the problem. Like every iteration he and I aren't arguing. Like, I think this is better. I think that it's like, I've done a breadboard and I've encountered a problem. And then he's like sort of tracking down that with the next, next version. And like has a, has a solution to that. So that you've got problem. two people, you got two people in the room. Yeah. And the doors closed, and and you you both have a lot of background knowledge that you're bringing to the same problem. So you have a you you're not you're not like struggling to catch each other up. Like you're kind of starting from the same point together. Like we know the same thing. How do we come up with a solution for this? And you you mentioned that it's not going out. That you're kind of trying to corner the problem. I know that feeling. There's this feeling of like. We're going to close the door and I don't know when we're going to come out again. It might be a couple hours, you know, mm -hmm. it might be the kind of thing where like you're, you're, you're jamming on the whiteboard until you both notice that you're way overdue for lunch and you're like exhausted or something, you know, it can be that kind of yeah. a thing, but there's yeah. this feeling of like, we are going to wrestle it down. Like we're going to, we're going to corner the problem. We're going to wrestle it down. We're going to sort of like get to the point where this thing makes sense and we don't have that that feeling of like, uh, what about that? What about that? So w one thing I'm trying to like, I, I, how to say I think, it exactly. No, so I, I think you, I think you're onto something where it's like, when I contrast it to years before, we, we had time to work, which is the biggest thing. If there's no prioritization happening at the high level, if I didn't have the insight to say, Jordan, I think this is a thing. And for him, who's also like kind of in charge of product strategy, right. To say like, yeah, let's, let's drain this. We are not free to lock that door and work through lunch, right? We're literally looking at the spreadsheet of the 200 feature requests, bug requests, everything going like, what do you think about the first one? Oh, we could ship a little fix here. What do you think about the second one? Oh, let's have this person working on it. And it's boom, 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 boom. The, the feeling that, that you get in the room with the other person that has the same knowledge only comes when you can lock the door and say like, we're going to work this as long as it takes. And it's not always ideal. Sometimes you have two hours, you say, let's come back tomorrow and let, let's, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. But there's no, like, it's different than, you know, it's, it's uh, two o'clock now, let's have something by 2.45 so we can document it and be out of the room by three. I mean, right. It's just, yeah. 
and and you mentioned that it's not going out in the sense that it's it's not spiraling out of control but in a way when i think about times where i've been in, in the room do and i i think of this as like the shaping room you know i mean there's a lot of steps to shaping but this is kind of like the defining moment of yes. shaping right yeah. and uh so we're we're not we're not like on a computer creating anything we're on the whiteboard and we're we're not even really drawing very carefully like this is the this the button goes here on top of this in the sidebar it's a bit more like breadboard like we're going to get from here to here to here to here and these are the connections and but where does yeah. that belong well we could put it on this screen well, can we get from that screen to this screen yeah but but we have to go here first blah 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 like so it's, it's all about the the connection between things but there is this sense of you are kind of going out in a way that you you might you might go down a false you might have a false start and be like, oh, oh you know what? Like, th th we, we can't, we, we shouldn't set up the payment form from here. It's got to be pre configured when you start your account. So there's got to, like, well, what, what, what if there was a button on the dashboard? And then you, you do a new breadboard and it like starts on the dashboard and there's like a, you know, see my view my payment link and it's already set up for you or whatever, right? And now you're sketching a new flow. There's this sense of like when you're down to only the two people and you have the same background information. And you're kind of sealed in your, you know, like shaping chamber together, you know, when the door is closed, like you have actually a little bit more latitude to, to be like, well, what about this? What about that? It, I feel like it's actually more like the right time to do that kind of jumping around. I think that's right. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's like, it's, we we talk about long periods of time, but the other thing that I'm thinking about is it still feels very, very fast. Not not fast in terms of like we arrive at a solution in, in 25 minutes, but fast in terms of we have so much shared knowledge. We can quickly highlight a problem, have a really good understanding of like what that is, like what, what you said, right? We, we can't set it up here because there's too much friction in there. And we know from the story that that's not going to work there because they're going to go back to their old way of getting paid. If You know, you know what I mean? So you can jump into that and sort of bounce around solutions, you know that you're not at the level of UI affordances having to argue over like, is this on the left or the right? And you know that you're not in a group that's so big where like eight people just heard that problem and they're all off like, well, if we implemented Elastics, or like we, we you know, we're, we're throwing tons and tons of different ideas that we have to, to sift through. There's uh, still something about that number two. It can't be one, I'm convinced of that. Like doing this alone is very, very difficult. I think you can do three. I think more than three, you're you're done. So it's it's not it's not it's not necessarily that you always have the answer and you're not you're not going out to unknowns. It's more that you are you're kind of constantly converging. So like even if you diverge for a second of like, wait a minute, maybe that should be over here, and then you start sketching a new breadboard, you're kind of already back together converging on the new idea instantly. Like we talk about the kind of the shaping room euphoria, you know, that mm -hmm. feeling of like, oh, ah, what about this? Aha, aha, oh yeah, that's gonna be, uh, no, 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 oh, oh shit, oh, wait a minute, uh, oh, no, this'll work. You know, like you're, yeah. you're moving really fast and you are entertaining alternatives, but you're not in this place where like you're sitting there with a concept that's supposed to work and four different things are wrong about it and you're all kind of like deflated, like, uh, but what about this, but what about that? like the energy isn't isn't dispersing and spreading out into all directions it's always kind of converging onto the uh, onto the new thing that you're sketching like right now yeah i think you you, you use the word euphoria that's exactly like i snapped a picture from i think tuesday of jordan drawing on the whiteboard at huddle books and that's like that was the exact feeling i mean we are on to something we are moving incredibly quickly towards a solution we, you know we know because we've done our research that customers are going to be delighted about this and the, the, the great contrast is that um, we were just working on a project like a month ago and we did hit that like brick wall where we probably had 40 hours, three of us into shaping this idea and we're like really excited about what we were about to hand to a group of engineers and designers and Jordan called out like we forgot this one thing and mm -hmm. it, it like... There, there's no arguing that brings you down, right? Like, whole, like, cause there's that moment, like, is this whole thing going to unravel on the, on mm -hmm. the back of this? But, but ha having the shared understanding of the problem, having the time to work it out, it's like, you can quickly regroup and say like, lean in, put our heads together. Like we might have to rebreadboard this whole thing, but it's like, we can, we can, we can solve this. 
And it's, it's an incredibly different feeling than running into that roadblock and just, I keep using out like, and then it's like, no, we have to throw this whole thing away. What if we were to do it all on the client side? Like some of these crazy, like uh, not, you take a, just, you suddenly everything. take a right turn, but then that, yeah. that right turn, like you don't actually go deep down and, 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 and wrestle it down and corner it and, and shape it into a really specific idea that you feel good about. It's like, you just take a right turn and you're like, well, let's just do it all client side. And you're like, fine, it'll work out. Let's just do it. And then you have this like queasy feeling in your stomach. Like we just, we just committed to a new idea, but we didn't actually wrestle it down enough to, to be sure about, about what it is. Yeah. We're pretty sure that all the trade-offs and decisions that we made up to this point are going to like translate but we're not going to go through. I just think that's like un unacceptable in terms of shape shaping work, right? You can't you can't end that way. Like, and then this fundamental thing changes, but it should all be all right. <laughs> totally so, right. So I want to contrast this. So uh, we get you get out of you get to the point where the two of you are jamming in a room. You 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 arrive at a point where you think you have a concept that is is worth pursuing. Uh, but so far, you know, you haven't had necessarily deeply knowledgeable backend people in the room. You haven't maybe had somebody who understands all the implications of how this has to integrate to other systems or, or whatever. Right. So there's this, you've done the shaping work, but in a way, this is still kind of preliminary. Do you go straight from that shaping room, shaping session to to going into the room with the eight people and then figuring out how to schedule the engineers or is there a step in between yeah i, th I think i kind of learned this the hard way um i think i did the eight person thing and um recently the way i do it is, is groups of twos and they're they're not incredibly well well designed i'll, I'll choose like a senior architect and a mid-level front-end person, like somebody that I think has domain knowledge of, of what I'm working on. And um, there's two things happening. One is um, I'm using it to to, to de-risk. And two, it's an opportunity for me to tell the whole pitch end-to-end -end and like get good at telling that story and hearing myself tell it and seeing if I can find holes in, in, in any of it. But basically, I think back to the question you asked, like, it's me and whoever did the shaping with two people who have the deep experience and, and I think this is very important, basically starting with an empty whiteboard and in most cases drawing the breadboard and saying, here's the first view, it's gonna to lead to this, this is gonna happen. And, and, and basically having it, I, I call it like walking them down the, down the path as opposed to like just presenting it to them in a, in a you know, PowerPoint or whatever that's, that's, that's pre-made. So you don't and have a document yet. You're, 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 you're not at the point where this is baked enough that you have like a presentation or a document. You're, you've done the shaping work now you're in a room with one or two technical people that have some certain kind of expertise that they're going to push back on you or or help you understand things that you don't you missed or don't understand and and you're not you're not showing them a document you're actually kind of walking them through the shaped concept like you've almost like got it memorized and you're and you're drawing it out like on the whiteboard in front of them that's exactly it we can actually get a little bit tactical here um in terms of base camp we start all of these with a base camp message where whoever is doing the shaping, like a lot of times it's me, I'll kick off the message and I'll say, here are the, the stats around the problem. You know, 23% of the people that use this feature churn, you know, from auto books here. Like, I think this is important. Here's what I know so far. Here's some interview recordings, things like that. You know, will you guys spend some time on this with me? We use that thread every time we get together and we're whiteboarding, we're snapping pictures, we're putting things in there. Usually it's like, hey, go find out this other statistic or talk to this user. And we're using that to, to build it up. So at the point where I'm going into the room with people to de-risk, that's all I have is like this long running thread. And at the bottom of it, there are typically a handful of really tight breadboards, right? Uh -huh. Like, cause it's, it's arrived at that point, but so you've nobody got a in the org has seen it. You've, you've built up some domain knowledge. You've built up some understanding about the problem. Is there a bunch of things that we know? And then here is the solution, but it, the solution is just limited to some really raw breadboard sketches. That's it. And I, and, and so like everything leading up to the breadboards is the story. So, so this is the, this is the, the, the great part about the, the de-risking is you get the people in the room, you can draw, draw the whole, the whole breadboard. They can see how the whole thing flows Two, two things happen is like you should have most of the time what I find is like I've got answers for about 80% of the things 
well, what about when this happens? Because I've heard that before. It's either like, that's incredibly rare and it's an edge case, or let me walk you through this part of the breadboard because it's actually captured here, right? But um, you, you have answers at your fingertips or you are lighting up because the person is giving you an incredible piece of knowledge. Like I did not realize the system worked that way. Mm. And like, I've got to go, you know, like I can go rework it and, and rethink it. The other, the other amazing thing that happens is like the, I don't know. I don't have words for it. Like the questions are, are, um, on point. Like you're, you're not getting the elastic search question. Like, you know, you could do this whole thing with, so it's like in this little place, um, I'm not sure when you make that call that you're going to get this value back that's going to let you populate that button so you can get uh, to the next page. It's so like you have very, a lot of, very... it's, it's almost like there's, there's this context because so much of the solution is baked and then there's this kind of like unbaked or half-baked little hole in it here or there. And then when you're talking about that one question, it's like you have, you have so many kind of specific things that are already solved around it that it's easier to... Like you fill that in and you can move on. Like, how is that different than than somebody raising a concern in in the in the slapdash meeting with eight people? H how's that different? Um, I think that the contrast comes because um, you know so much more about what you're trying to accomplish, how you're going to accomplish it, and the the reason that you're you're solving this problem. Is this because you spent more time in that room with the with the the the, the two person session doing the shaping? Like you've thought deeper about the about the solution. I think it's both. I think you 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 if you get to a place where you can do shaping well and you're making trade offs and you're able to like do the design, it also means that you have a pretty good idea of your insight and the problem that you're solving. Mm. And 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 I think both those things combine to uh, create a presentation where people can ask, actually ask you, ask you really pointed questions and you can have pointed answers without like sort of spiral, you know, spiraling out or, or, or being challenged in a way where you're saying like, yep, never thought of that. Like not, not sure how that, how that would work. So do I have it right? It sounds like from the sort of product person standpoint, like you're the one who is trying to make this feature you're trying to figure out what this feature is and you're trying to make this feature happen. You mm -hmm. start off with a certain amount of, of digging that you have to do into what's the problem, what's the data telling us, or what are the customer interviews telling us? Like there's some kind of an understanding about what the struggle is and what progress looks like that you're gonna turn into some sort of a design solution. Mm -hmm. You get in the room, you do the, you get in the shaping room and you do the shaping work to to breadboard it out and make some basic trade-offs and like this is this is what we think is a viable approach mm -hmm. for this is a feature that fits our appetite that is going to do what we want to do then when you when you get into what what you've been calling the the de-risking conversations you've got this shaped work and because you sort of did the demand thinking leading up to it you have good questions about like well why what why don't we also have a sort option over here? And you're like, well, we don't really need it because what the customer is trying to do is this and not that. And, and so you're you're able to make those trade-offs in terms of what matters and what doesn't matter. But but you're learning at the same time in these de-risking sessions about like what's technically possible or what did you not know about how this actually has to wire together. That's it. So I'll give you two concrete examples. So So one, when we did the payment form, Two, two questions that I'm, I'm recalling that came up are our, our, um, Aaron, our, our co-founder, who's like knows the system better than anyone in the world. Um, one of the places he went was, um, how, so we're creating a unique URL called the payment form that every SM small business that uses AutoBooks, they're going to get a one link that they can share with their customers. And we had done the research and, and, and he had connected dots when he heard the pitch that we were going to create some mechanism for them to send this. So he's uh -huh. like, how do you, how do you text it? How do you email it? How do you, and like, we, like we leaned on the insights, right? And it was very, it wasn't a challenging thing, but he's like, how are we going to build all this? And I said, it's totally out of scope. Like they know how to get an invoice to their customer today. They know how to text message them. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. And it was like, boom, he's, uh -huh. he's back into the, into the fold. So we got past that. Like, oh, this is and the, the other thing about like, when you have the problem bound, people are excited, right? Because it's like, we can ship this thing a lot faster and we don't need to build that. And you know, the customer so you know we don't have to build that and we're still going to be successful? It's like, that's a great answer to that question, Hold on. Right? I, I, I have to interrupt because you use such good language. You said, so first of all, you said when 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 he asked about, well, how are we going to send the link to the to the 
to our customer's customer, you're saying yeah. that's out of that's out of scope. Yep. And then and then and then a few moments later, he said, you know, when we have the problem bound, blah 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 blah. Yes. Like so, this notion of in, Nobody... in if, if you didn't if you if you had only done shallow prep, and and you get into the room, and then somebody says. Well, what about uh, how are we going to send the how are we going to send the the link to the customer? Then like three hands go up, and one person says, "We'll build an SMS thing that sends it." Another person says, "We're going to build an email notifier that sends it." Another person says, "We'll do a push notification through the app." And 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 then and then before you know it, you're talking about all this added scope because everybody's like throwing out ideas, and nobody has. I don't know exactly how to say this, but there's a certain kind of backbone and firmness that you get from doing the prep, where you're able to say. No, that doesn't matter. What this is really about is the mechanism for receiving the payment. As long as this person already knows how to how to text message a URL or whatever, so as long as we can copy and paste the URL to the to the to the payment form, this is all going to be fine. We don't need to worry about that. Like, but you you're not going to be prepared to to make that to to set that boundary. Yes. Unless, unless you've, you've actually kind of built up that confidence by doing sort of that, that, you know, Bob calls it, uh, he's called it forging before to emphasize mm. kind of how much heat and energy and, and intensity there is in the thinking that leads up to that. Like you've done that forging work of, of what's this actually about and what matters and what doesn't matter so that you can set those boundaries. And then, and then now I think we're kind of connecting it back to, you were talking about spiraling out. That's a, beautiful example of like not spiraling saying no nope, yeah. that's out of scope that that's that's exactly it i think you have a you have a base camp term for this one of the things that i'm adamant about is is um like everything is complex so like the, the second you get into a situation like the payment form and an engineer just says like oh i've done the twilio integration before like we could just slap that on there they could send an sms like i, I i'm just adamant about we have so many decisions to make just based on the scope that we're presenting that you wanting to add things to it, it, it it's it's like it's all unseen complexity, right? And, and we just need to keep our arms around it. And I think when you know the insight, it's the it's the only way to, to push back against that. Because it, Bob and I always joke, everything is just better. Be better if you could do a text. Be better if you could uh -huh. send an email. How do you uh -huh. argue against better? Like, yeah, let's ship all this stuff. It's going to be the best product in the world. Yeah. Yeah, but so there seems but to be not... this thing where when when you have a, a a tiny tiny group with a lot of shared context in the room, you can make trade offs. And when you have a big group, this is just the committee meeting thing, right? Every time you get a committee, what happens? You have to say yes to everything, or you have to put everything onto some kind of a ice box or parking lot because you can't agree to say no to it. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. it's like the it. bigger the group, the more it is kind of like yes, 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 because you. You, you don't have enough shared context and it's too hard to get the depth together to, to actually make trade-offs and say no to certain things. That's, that's exactly it. So, so, I, so I'll I, give you, go ahead. Oh, let me give you my second example. Cause so, so the first one was, was from Aaron, right? Like let, let, let's talk about how we're going to address this. Nope. It's out of scope. We're free. Like there's a delight in the room, right? Like we're going to nail this. Like we don't have to worry about any of that. This is going to be incredible. The second one, one of our chief, chief architects, came out and was like, well, you know, when you get paid, you create a credit on the customer's account. And like, you're going to do some, so if I send you an invoice for a hundred dollars and then I do some work for you on the side and you use my payment form to pay me a hundred dollars, when you open that invoice, that's unrelated, you're going to have a zero dollar balance. Like there's not going to be anything to pay. So like they're, they're now, this is an example, like now we're in the pointiness, right? That's something like where Jordan and I, our eyes were lighting up. Like, yes, like we didn't know that we don't have the intricacies of accounting to, to the level that these uh. people do. And like, but it's, it's right there dead center. And we were able to quickly work through. She had us like, let me think about this for a second. Well, if we do this and we chart it to another, like she can, she can figure the whole thing out. And we, we, we come out of it with a tighter scope, not a, not a bigger scope. That's beautiful. That's that, that 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 makes me think of another Bobism, which is like the way to solve a problem. You to the way to solve a, an unknown is to surround it with knowns. Yes. So it's like you've got so much that you understand about what to do, and then this new unknown comes up. But like you can triangulate around it to figure out what to do. Yeah, I think that's right. I think it's a cool, good way to think about it. So we. So I, got, I cut you off to give you the other. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we we've got kind of these. Um, 
the 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 after is starting to get clearer. So we've got the the shaping work that happens with the two people in the room. And then and then this corresponds to chapter four in the book called Find the Elements. This is mm -hmm. where we talk about like moving quickly in front of the breadboard together and fat marker sketches and stuff like that. And then that's the shaping room. And then you've been talking about these de-risking sections. And and we don't I, I mean, I think I think maybe there's one part of the book that uses the term de-risk, but the the this is basically chapter five, risks and rabbit holes, yeah. and and it's this notion of, I've we've got it figured out enough that we're now going to have another, again small session, where we're going to build up a lot of context together. But this time, instead of like you know whatever the product person and a designer or two designers sketching on a whiteboard together, we've got somebody who's really deeply technical that we're sharing the concept with and it's almost kind of conspiratorial it's like hey this isn't <laughs> you know this this isn't up on the wall anywhere this isn't like the thing that we're all doing next it's like we're we're working on this thing and what do you think right and and, and the, let me the, walk you through it and the freedom that like i i the, the contrast has got like i'm not asking you how long it's going to take i'm not asking if you uh -huh. can do it by november i'm not like it, you have to caveat because we're all so right. used to working this other way it's like and then like the the first time you have to caveat now like i walk around the office i'm like can i grab an hour of your time they're like yeah no big deal like they know i'm not, I'm not gonna pin them to the wall or something right and you're you're not paper shredding you're not like uh let's turn this into a whole bunch of tasks that are going to go into some kind of a sprint you're not you're not actually turning this into work you're you're looking at the work to figure out what the work is still that's it. I think we we might be taking a little bit of it, but but that's the interesting thing is that there's a culture change that that we we've, we've gone through at Auto Books and and that I think everybody is going to have to go through if they want to adopt Shape Up is is that this is the work. Like I, I there, there were there were like uh, I'd pull an engineer in and I'm like let's do, can we just focus on this for three hours and like do some whiteboards and it was like I got I've got a lot of work to do. It's and I'm saying like this is the future of our product. Like I this is the thing. Uh -huh. Like you you need to be like going and it, it it doesn't take long for people to figure that out, but there's always It may like, not be coding, get, but it's important. That's it. I got to get back to my computer and 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 you know, punch out some code. So um, now I want to I want to connect the dots. So we've done the shaping session. We've done one or two de-risking sessions where technical people are pushing back and filling in holes and stuff like that. Now there still has to come a point where the third thing happens, where there's some sort of a meeting where the CTO is there or whoever is there that makes the resource allocation decision. And yeah. you're trying to say like, are we going to do this thing in the next cycle or not? Is this thing going to happen? And you've got more, now you've really got more people in the room maybe. And, and you don't, you're in that 30 minute meeting, but now it's not a slapdash meeting. It's something else. I, I, I'm wondering, it starts to sound almost like, it sounds a little bit more like a betting table to me mm -hmm. in the sense of like you're, you're doing less design work in that session. You're not actually trying to come up with the solution, but you've got a, you've got a, a proposed solution. So you've got a potential bet that you're bringing into the room and you've done so much work on it already, both from a design side and from a technical sort of de-risking side that as the questions come up, like, what about this? What about that? You actually have answers to those questions. You and you're not spiraling out. You're 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 kind of cutting off all of these uncertainties as they come up. So I'll tell you I'll tell you the audiobooks version. I think it might actually be a little bit different than how you do it at, at Basecamp. Um, I will actually like set. No, maybe this is the same. I will actually settle on what I consider is a de-risked pitch at some point in time. So I pull two people into the room. I tell them like, you had a lot of, like, I want you to sleep on this. I'm going to grab you later this week. I'll pull the next two people in. I'll do rounds of that. And then there's just a point at which I'm, I'm thinking like, I could hand this to engineers. Like nothing's going to, going to jump out. Uh -huh. And I kind of set it to the side. And I think you, you do something similar. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing in auto books is that um, we do that and we fill our, we call it the hopper, right? We, we fill, we fill the hopper. And then um, the folks that are involved in the betting table on the, on the small business side, uh, Nitin Singh is our product manager, Jordan runs growth and, and myself are, are typically making most of the priority decisions. We are all kind of in the know on these. So we've participated mm -hmm. in shaping to one level or, or another. And basically it's in the two or so weeks, three weeks leading up to when the next cycle will start we're having like little 30 minute meetings. And, and basically it's, it, the meetings are all about 
it's more about the business, more about our goals, and more about the, the current state of the world than it is um, than it is anything else. So basically, we're saying like we've got these three, five, ten things on the table. Um, we actually just did this. Like are, 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 these clearly will focus more on adoption and sort of kicking that up. These will focus on retention and a little bit of a churn thing. Like given it's the end of the year, these things are happening. We're launching these new banks. Like what do we actually think we're gonna we're gonna peel off? Or peel off and, and work on but it's like a, it's sort of a series like let's meet for 30 minutes all right let's talk again next week like the, those are good and and we're but we're it's the um the, the the bucks in the wild we're like butting heads sort of making our case and and figuring it out so you you you're decoupling the 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 preparation of potential projects from the commitment to those projects because you're, you're even though you might have gotten to a point where you feel like, hey, this payment form thing is totally shaped up, and we feel like we've removed as much risk as we can, and we've got good answers to all the questions about it, like we we're sure it's going to fit into the six weeks, blah blah blah. But there's still this other conversation about, well, but what else is going on in our world? Is this the right time or not? Mm -hmm. Do we do it this cycle, or do we hold on to it and maybe do it in a future cycle? Like, is is that the kind of conversation that's happening? That's exactly it. What are the and the, the one thing that I left out is is just people too, right? Like we're going into a, a cycle. Uh, end of the year is always weird, right? Because we have this not quite six weeks Thanksgiving. Eh? Yep. One of our guys is heading overseas, and it's a front end resource. So you know, does, what does that change? So there's all these these um, constraints that you you sort of look at and, and figure out what's going to move the business the most. This uh, I, I want to bring it back to to my friend who who was in who's in the larger company who's who's also applying shape up. And the after is very similar there too. So he says, in the new approach, the engineer and the designer sat down for the last few days and they reviewed the designs and they spiked some technical approaches and kind of hammered the scope together. And they collaborated on, on in his language, rewriting the stories with what they had mm -hmm. figured out, which I think maps to kind of you turning all that, those, the shaping and the de-risking kind of into the pitch right it's like we got the we, we didn't just go into the room and then say now we need to figure out how to like turn this into a something that that programmers can do the engineer and the designer actually sit together dig deeper into it resolve the technical issues and then they rewrite the stories in a way that that, can, that has more knowledge in it now and has firmer answers and clearer boundaries and so now he says they're in now they're in a grooming session again like they were before with the slapdash version. Now they're in a grooming session and the engineer is the one who's walking through the scope and the story. And, and the quote is actually tears of joy all around, which, which, you know, if, if you're, if you're not part of it, maybe it sounds a bit much to say tears of joy, but if you've been there, that feeling of like, Whoa, like we have good answers for everything. We feel certain we have trust. We feel like this is actually going to happen. You know, we're not like dreading getting into this project that has a whole bunch of bad holes in it. And it's repeatable. I mean, I, I think the biggest difference is like, even if, you, if you're if you in Slapdash world, you, you will eventually stumble upon a problem. Like, I know that insight. Like, I know that customer, let's go fix it. And you sort of stumble into some concreteness, right? This is, we have now done shape up and de-risking and the betting so many times, like, we know, like, I'll, 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 Nitin will look at me like that. Oh, Jordan, Jordan drew on the whiteboard the other day. Like, it's it was the circle, like the well bounded scope, but it was a dotted line. And he said, like, this is where you're at right now with your project. Like, there's too many holes. There's too many. But the 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 converse of that is like it's that elation of this thing is well bound. Everyone's going to be excited about it. There's not a lot of holes in it, and we're like we're ready to go. And it's it it feels fantastic. The other thing that I wanted to touch on that, that you mentioned that we didn't talk about is there is. I mentioned the, the long running message where we have sort of all of our notes and insights and things like that. We do mm -hmm. go through a step of um, when I get done with de-risking, I will formalize. It's like the last iPad drawing of the breadboard. Uh -huh. It's a very concise description of here's, here's the problem facing autobooks, the, the opportunity facing autobooks. Here's what we're going to go do. Here, here are the breadboards. If you want to, you know, I always have a little bit of an appendix. If you want to listen to some interviews or watch some full story videos or whatever, like here, here you go. Um, and, and, and it sort of packages the whole thing up for, for public, public consumption. I will say like, it sounds like a lot of like rework and, and busy work, but there's, 
there's pride in this, right? Like mm. we've done the work of figuring out what the customer's struggling with and understanding what's going to move the business forward. And we're very, very confident in that. And then it's almost like the passing of the, of the torch, like the, the team is going to be able to go crush this. And then there's going to be another round of delight, like when they actually get it over the finish line and launch it and we see the outcomes. And so there's like a big that. asymmetry here because you are doing more work up front. There's, there's hours and hours that are going in to prep this work instead of the 30 minute slapdash. Uh, but then on the other side of this, after you make the bet and the team actually takes over the work, they are, they're kind of hitting the ground running with way more focus and, and clear guardrails and a lot of energy because they feel like we know what to do, this thing makes sense. And then as difficult points come up kind of during the cycle for the team that's actually building it, they, they have something to refer back to to also make trade-offs and say, oh, that's out of scope, that's out of bounds, we're not gonna spiral out on that. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a, something to touch on too. And, and this was actually, we didn't do this a whole lot with payment form because it was our first sort of foray through this. So I, um, I, was, I found myself constantly sort of, not constantly, probably five times throughout the project kind of like cornered in my office up against the wall with people who were like, what about this? Like, we're, uh -huh. we're, we're really in trouble. And it was like, okay, hard decision. Let's make it. Okay, yep. everyone feel good. Let, let's go. So there's like a little slap dashery going on there. Yep. Um, the, the, the next project we did, um, I won't drain it, but it's, um, we call it like the, the, the first in-app experience that you get with AutoBooks. We're going to show you how to create an invoice and actually like walk you through that process in a really good way. It, the, the scope was so tight that um, I found myself twice cornered in my office and basically like walk back to the, where we have the, we call the small business pod, all their, all their desks. I said like, let's pull up the scoping document and we would read through the scoping document. They get halfway through and they'd say like, yeah, we know how to make that decision. We know how to make uh. that trade off. It happened twice. And then we got to the end of the project and they said, yeah, that happened like four more times. We didn't go ask you, like we had it right there. And it's it's not like it's the instructions are there, but they're they're yeah, it's great not a at spec. making design decisions. They're it's great not, at making it's engineering not like, decisions. It's no. it's not a spec with a bunch of bullet points and like oh we missed that bullet point. It's more like they're reacquainting themselves with the boundaries of what matters and what doesn't matter, so they can then come up with the bullet point of what that detail is. That's it. And I'm sure it's not. I don't know what your experience is. It's not a hundred percent, but it's like to to learn right. to trust in that work and trust in that document is just it's fantastic. So I want to I want to bring us I want to wrap us up with kind of a reflection that 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 you and I talked about you know before we started to record which was that that you can get into this this question with yourself of you know how do I how do I rearrange my time or or how do I restructure things so that I can work one way versus the other but at the, there's a point where no matter what you do you're gonna have to make these decisions at some point, right? So we were talking about kind of the, there's there's the question of process. You say, oh, we have the shaping room and the de-risking sessions, and then I write the pitch, and then I bring it to the group, and then we, you know, and then we bet on it. But there's also just sort of the deeper like facts of the universe. Like we're gonna have to make these trade-offs at some point. And if we don't make them up front, we're gonna end up facing those trade-offs and those difficult decisions when we have the wrong people in the room, too many people in the room and not enough time. And then we're going to be like, the universe is going to basically push us into a corner where we have to do this sort of mad dash slap dash decision-making. Yeah. I, so I think um, the example that I gave about the credit being created in the payment form is one of those situations like without our architect calling that out, we would have had an engineer at the probably at the end of the cycle, right? Facing something that's like, hey guys, did you know that we break all of the invoicing capabilities in AutoBooks by launching this? And and then we're at a circuit breaker moment, right? You guys uh -huh. refer to it as like, well, there's there is so much accounting complexity that's going on in the back end. Like they're gonna race through it. They're gonna just either decide to break it because they're up against time pressure or do something weird or like, but to, to your point, the universe is gonna force that decision to be made you're either going to make it thoughtfully upfront with two people in a room or in a de-risking room where we have the freedom to like, let's, let's talk, let's think about how narrow that problem is. It's a credit. Mm -hmm. We need to not do that credit. We got the top people in the room. Let's think about some, some options and come up with a solution. You either do it under, under those circumstances, or you do it when one person is head down saying like, I'll just do this and it should be okay. And then it turns out just blowing, blowing up on you. But to your point about the universe, 
it, it's going to happen one way or another. You need to ship code. The decision is going to have to be made. Totally. So I think that's a good place to stop for today. Uh, feels like nice to be back. Nice to uh, nice to record an episode again. Uh, you know, we'll bless this out to everybody who who was following the first two and. You know, uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll get another one soon. Maybe maybe we won't. But uh, I feel like we have a lot to talk about. So so we are going to stay connected, and and we'll see what comes next. Sounds good. See you, man. All right. Take care.